I'm talking today to Helen Witten. Helen is a coach, mediator, facilitator, and writer working for Positive Works. Hi, Helen. How are you? Hi, really well. Thanks very much, Joanne. Great. Helen, today we'll talk a little bit about work-life balance. Let's begin with the business world. What tips or tools do you have for HR and managers and top executives who battle the daily life work life balance? Okay, I think um, one of the most important things for senior managers and HR is to walk their talk. Um, they will often give a message to staff that they really care about family and family-friendly and work-life balance. Um, but then you see all the senior managers working ridiculous hours and uh, not taking lunch and, you know, traveling the world all the time and all of that sort of thing. And inevitably, those who are working for them will see uh, this as, as behaviors of success. Um, and instead, actually, quite often people do burn out. I mean, I have, you know, I've seen quite a few instances over the 20 years I've been working uh, where, you know, people do burn out. And uh, so I think what, what senior managers can do is really mean it. You know, if you, if you have family-friendly policies, um, try to do them yourself and also uh, try to um, really encourage behaviors and practices, working practices, that enable people to be flexible, uh, to take time out perhaps at lunchtime to go for a walk or go to the gym, uh, certainly time away from the desk, uh, to have a decent lunch. Uh, in, in, uh, in London at the moment, they say the only people who are still eating a proper lunch are the French. <laughs> Is there ever a time where the work side of things, perhaps as a startup company, should outweigh the balancing of work life? Yes, I, I think so. I think in everybody's working careers, there probably will be times where you just have to push it. Uh, I set up my business, Positive Works, back in 1993. It was another recession. Um, and I certainly worked extremely hard uh, for several years to get it going, and I was enjoying it. It wasn't a, it wasn't a great shape. It was, you know, great passion, really, uh, but I certainly worked harder than I would recommend most people work. Uh, similarly, I think in the business world and in all kinds of different organizations, there will be times, uh, times of the year, perhaps, where you have to get your accounts in or projects that have to be managed, uh, where it's perfectly acceptable if, if you feel it and decide it's acceptable uh, to work longer hours and think about it in the evening or whatever. The, the, the danger is that that can become a habit. And so what people have to watch out for is if you've had a period where you've worked really hard and really late as a team or as an individual, um, just be careful that that doesn't become a habit. Um, because humans are deeply habitual, and we get used to sitting at our desks for a particular length of time. Uh, we get used to, I don't know, John in the corner going before we do, or Mary in the other corner, you know, staying a bit later, or whatever, we, and the sun being at a particular stage of the, the, the sky, and, you know, we literally get used to things. So if we have been working very hard, just stop and think and say, okay, now that project's over. Give yourself a break because these rest activity periods are absolutely fundamentally important to one's well-being and one's health. As a coach, how do you go in and help somebody, whether it's in a business or a private individual, how do you help them get that work-life balance? Okay, so if I'm working uh, with an individual, I will get them to step back and look at their life and, um, and then create a picture of a new life, if you like. I'll get them literally sometimes to draw a picture of what would an ideal life look like? What is it that they want? And I, I make it often in a mind map format um, with, you know, just suggested branches uh, of all kinds of different aspects of life that can be one's health, that can be friends, family, children, partner, work, career, travel, 
um, giving them prompts, if you like, to look at all the different aspects of their life and imagine if it were working in a way that really felt like a good balance, a good broad balance of life. Um, we then compare that with what's happening today, and then that gives you a project, pretty much, to work towards. And you think, okay, I now my brain now knows the goals. It knows what success will look like. Um, so from then on, you need the thoughts, the emotions, the behaviors, the actions that will take you there. So it's a stepping back process. It's a, if you like, a dreaming process of, you know, what would be different? How would you know it was different? How would you feel if it were different? Um, and then you help that person through a coaching program to get there. So that's the individual. If you're working with a team, you do a very similar kind of process. You know, what's happening now? Uh, people aren't going to the doctor, for example, and because they don't feel they can ask their manager to, to take time out or, you know, those kinds of things. You're, you're looking again at what would balance look like for this team? What does it take to get there? And with regards to working mothers and balancing work and family, what tips or tools can you give them to help create the work-life balance and perhaps lessen that feeling of guilt that they sometimes have? Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's a real issue of today. And I think it's about making life as simple as you possibly can. Um, I, I think that means the mornings, make your mornings as simple as you can. It also means really, again, stepping back and looking at the priorities. What are the things that you really want to do? Uh, where, what, what sort of events do you really need to be there for for your children? Um, how are you going to make sure you give quality time to your partner? Uh, and, uh, you know, if you are going to work, then it's about letting go of the guilt. You know, if you've made that decision, guilt isn't really a very helpful um, feeling, and it doesn't bring a good energy into uh, a home or, or to children. Um, but I think uh, another thing that's absolutely crucial is to be there with them. Um, when we're tired and when we're under pressure at work with lots of different um, challenges, if you like, uh, it's easy for your mind to be in many different places, even though you're with your children or with your partner. And the interesting thing is that the body can only be in one place at a time, but the mind can be in many places. Uh, but I think the quality of your relationships goes up hugely when you're really there with you know, mind and body for your children at the end of the day. They've had a day at school or you know, whatever they've been doing. Just taking that time to truly listen, truly be with them, um, actually will take you out of your work mode, which is important to relax your shoulders, you know, relax, be there, get into that you who is the, the home person rather than the work professional, um, and relax with them, you know, get down on the floor with them if necessary, or, or whatever it takes. Uh, because it's good for you as well as it being good for them. And that way, you're really focusing on priorities. And do plan your home life. Uh, one of the things that I find is that people are very, very good at planning their office life, their day, these three things I'm going to do today. But they're not so good at planning uh, what they're going to do either in the evening, how should we make tonight, uh, this evening a good evening and enjoy ourselves and not just sit in front of the TV with... Uh, a, a home, you know, a meal. Um, what can we do to make the weekend a really good weekend and then diarize it? Uh, does that make sense? Sorry, my, my computer suddenly went. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And finally, what are the benefits of working with a coach? I think the benefit is that you come to uh, learn more about yourself. I, th I think uh, it was one of the people who said an unexamined life is not worth living. I think it's about examining your life. It's about helping, um, you know, I think what I do is to help individuals step back, uh, look at what are they doing just because they've fallen into, say, a career. Perhaps it was a, it was a holiday job and they've fallen into it. Uh, is this really who they are? Is it really what they want to do? Is it really where their talents lie? Um, I think uh, a coach will challenge a, uh, in, a, in a very constructive way. You know, you're on that person's side. You're trying to help that person do everything they can to make the most of themselves and make, make the most of their lives. 
I think the fact that you see a coach maybe six times or three times or however many times it, it, it is relevant to see them uh, means that you're keeping that development in mind all the time. Uh, and I think if you go on a one-day training course, you can do so much, but then it's up to the individual to, to keep uh, repeating and reviewing and reinforcing. Whereas with a coach, what you're doing is if you're seeing somebody over a period of weeks, is it's that constant reinforcement, the uh, examining, reviewing, seeing what you need to do differently, and then going forward towards success. Thank you, Helen. Thank you so much for your time. It's been great to talk to you, Joanne.